let's talk about work and kinetic energy. What is the relationship between the two? Well, for one thing, work and kinetic energy can be in the same units, such as joules. Now, there's something called the work energy theorem, which basically states that the net force, the work done by the net force on an object, is going to equal the change in the kinetic energy of that object. So in other words, W, the work done by the net force, is going to be equal to delta AE. But now, let's go ahead and derive this formula. So let's say we have a block resting on a horizontal frictionless surface. And we are going to apply a force. So there's only going to be one force in the x direction. So that force will be the same as the net force. And we're going to move this block by some displacement d. Now the work done by that force is going to be equal to the force times the displacement of the object. Now, because this is the only force acting on the object in the x direction, W is going to represent the net work done on the object by that net force. Now, according to Newton's second law, we know that the net force, which in this example is simply S, it's equal to MA. So we're going to replace F with MA. So we get this formula. Work is mad, M-A-D. Now, let's go back to our old kinematics equation. We're going to use this one. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A-D. Now, we're going to focus on this part, acceleration multiplied by displacement. I'm going to isolate this term in that equation on the right. So I'm going to move the initial squared to the other side. I'm going to get v final squared minus v initial squared. And then to separate the two from AD, I'm going to divide both sides by two. So I get that acceleration times displacement is the, it's one half the square differences, or let me say that again, one half the square difference of the final speed and the initial speed. So let's replace AD with what we have here. So now I'm going to distribute the M, and I'm going to move the 2 to the front and write it as a half. So M times V squared over 2, that is 1 half MV final squared. And then m times negative v initial squared over 2 is negative 1 half m v initial squared. Now we know that kinetic energy is equal to 1 half m v squared. So 1 half m v final squared, that represents the final kinetic energy. And 1 half m v initial squared represents the initial kinetic energy. And the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, we can replace that with the change in kinetic energy. So that is how we can derive this equation using these two formulas. Work is equal to force times displacement, and V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2AD. So that's how you could derive the work energy theorem. But now let's use an example problem so you could see how they relate to each other. So let's say we have a horizontal frictionless floor, and we have a 10 kilogram block, and we're going to apply a force of 90 newtons on this block. And let's say initially, this block is moving to the right at a speed of 4 meters per second. Now we're going to apply this 90 newton force for displacement of 20 meters. 
go ahead and calculate the work done by this force using, do it two ways. Now the first method is pretty straightforward. The work done by this force on the block is simply force times displacement. So it's going to be 90 newtons times 20 meters. 9 times 2 is 18. If we carry over the two zeros, we get 1,800 newton meters, which is 1,800 joules. Now let's calculate the work by using the change in kinetic energy formula. So we know the initial speed is 4 meters per second. We need to determine the final speed. Now using F is equal to MA, we can calculate the acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be force over mass. So we have 90 newtons of force acting on a 10 kilogram object. And that will give us an acceleration of 9 meters per second squared. Now, using this formula, V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2AD, we can calculate the final speed. So V initial is 4, the acceleration is 9, the displacement is 20. 4 squared is 16. 20 times 9 is, well, 2 times 9 is 18, so 20 times 9 is 180, times 2, that's 360. So we get V final squared is 376. So now let's take the square root of that value. That's going to give us 19.3907 meters per second squared. I mean, just meters per second. So now we could use this formula to calculate the work. It's going to be the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So that's going to be 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. So the mass is 10. v final is 19.39. 0 0.07 meters per second. And the initial speed is 4. So 19.3907, we know that once we square it, we're going to get 376 times half of 10, which is 5. So that's going to give us 1880. Now, 4 squared is 16 times 10, that's 160. Half of 160 is 80. 1880 minus 80 is 1800. So as we can see, we get the same answer. But that's how you can calculate the work done by a force. You can multiply force and displacement to get the answer, or you can determine the answer by calculating the change in kinetic energy. Now let's work on a similar problem. So this time we're going to have a five kilogram mass on a horizontal frictionless floor. And we're going to apply a force of 40 Newtons. Now initially, this block will be at rest. So it's going to accelerate from rest. And we're going to apply this force for a time period of eight seconds. What is the work done by this force? So in this problem, we're not given the displacement of the object or that the object travels through while the force is acting upon it. So feel free to pause the video and calculate the work done using both methods. The first thing I would do is calculate the acceleration. So we have a force of 40 Newtons acting on a five kilogram object. 40 divided by five is eight. So we get an acceleration of eight meters per second squared. We know the initial velocity is zero. 
but we can calculate the final velocity. Using this formula, v final is equal to v initial plus at. v initial is zero. We got an acceleration of eight meters per second squared, which means that every second, the velocity will increase by eight. So eight times eight is 64. So that's gonna be the final velocity. Now we can calculate the displacement since we know the initial and the final velocity, as well as the time. So the initial velocity is zero, the final velocity is 64, the time is eight. Half of 64 is 32, so this is gonna be 32 times eight. Thirty thirty two times eight is two hundred and fifty six. So that's going to be the displacement. That's how far this block is going to travel in eight seconds with a forty newton force acting upon it. So now, now let's calculate the work. So the work done by the force is going to be force times displacement, which is forty newtons times 256 meters. So that's gonna give us 10,240 joules. Now let's use the work energy theorem to calculate the work done by the 40 Newton force. So this is gonna be one half mv final squared minus one half mv initial squared. So the mass is five, the final velocity is 64. The initial velocity is zero, so this disappears. The work is simply equal to the final kinetic energy in this problem. So 0 0.5 times five times 64 squared will give us the same answer of 10,240 joules. So those are two simple ways in which you can calculate the network done by a force or the work done by a net force. You could use the force times displacement formula or you can calculate the work done by calculating the change and the object's kinetic energy.